How's it going guys and girls and welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing great and you've been enjoying the content. So we've been thinking lately a little bit about all the feedback and some you know topics that I think that will offer a lot of value to traders across the board. And I was on a podcast recently on, on Stephen Goldstein's podcast and he was asking me some questions about you know what are the things that I wish that I knew when I first started trading that I know now and I thought you know what this is perfect to do a YouTube episode on so three things that I wish that I knew when I first started trading that I personally believe would have just sped up my journey just a lot more and just made me feel better about the journey as well so many of us we feel all these emotions and then we realize you know sometimes a year or two down the line that oh this was so much more effective so if I can offer you guys and girls some value from processes that has helped me that I wish that I knew then it may save you a lot of time so I'm excited to get into it <laughs> Right guys, so I was going to just talk about this part, but I thought, you know what, it'd be perfect to just put something on the board just so you can reference. So essentially, these are the three things. So we have processes, and we have minimizing the monetary impact and forecasting. These are honestly, guys and girls, these are, these are the three things. You know, there's lots of other tiny little things, but you know, three things that come to mind are these. These are huge, and, and I spent way too much time either not having the right process or not understanding the monetary side of things, and especially this part here, which we'll come to. But first part, let's look at processes. Why are processes important? Well, essentially, what you'll find is as a trader, having a great process will give you a great outcome. What we tend to do is we tend to focus on the outcome. So for example, if you're a trader right now and you're looking to get into Forex or you've just got into Forex or you might have been in Forex for a while, you'll probably find that you haven't asked yourself this question enough. What are my processes? And you'll tend to find you'll focus on, you know, how much money you can make, how much profit you can make, how many pips you can make. You'll be focused on that without even realizing so much, without having good processes. Now that can come in the form of journaling, come in the form of trading checklists. Trading checklist, this is one that, you know, it gets talked about a lot, it gets spoken about a lot, but not enough. And the reason why I say that is that asking good questions in trading is single-handedly one of the most important things that you can do. And the reason as to why is that when you ask good questions, for example, I was, I was speaking to someone, one of the students on a podcast recently, and what he does is that he, he draws his patterns on a post-it note, right? Now, what he does is he always refers to that because he's got his trading plan, he's got his post-it notes, and then he realizes that on that post-it note, these are the trades. And sometimes trades can look similar, right? But if he's got them right by his screen before he takes a trade, he does a quick cross-reference, looks at it and says, well, is this part of my plan? Or does it just look similar? Or does this just look good, right? And then what he does by doing that, he can then cross that off and realize, well, does it meet the criteria? Does it fit my plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because some of people have trading plans, but they don't follow them. And you'll find that, I mean, how many of you felt the same way? Well, you have a trading plan, you actually have one, but you don't even reference whether you stick to it. So three weeks goes by, you don't know whether you're sticking to your plan or not, you just think that you might. Having little details like that are huge. So asking good questions, this is one of the, the single-handedly one of the most important things that I wish that I did. I didn't have any processes at all, you know, you know, from anything, from journaling to trading checklists, you name it. I was just kind of just going with, oh, this looks good, this feels good. I'll, I'll decide that I'll risk this much because this feels right. And it's crazy that thousands or probably hundreds of thousands of traders right now are doing the same thing. They're just not asking good questions and they're wasting so much time. Have good processes, figure out what process works for you. Second point, minimizing the monetary impact. Now, actually I'll, just, I'll write something on here. So let's say for example, we've got, let's say a 10,000 pound account, just write that roughly, 10K, and you're risking 1%, right? So if you're risking 1% per trade, you're risking 100 pounds per trade. So let's say for example, you're risking that. What people will do, if, they've, if you've not you know, fully grasped this, let's say if this figure, this 10K figure, is a lot of money to you, you will put so much importance on that figure and think that, you know, I'm, I'm trading 10,000, that's a lot of money to me. And then what you do is that when you place the trade, you forget about this figure. You forget about the 100, you forget about the 1%. You know, that's assuming that you actually risk 1% per trade. But let's say that you do, I'm assuming that you risk 1% per trade. You forget about the 100 pound figure. And why is that important? Because look at the look at the difference between that 10K and 100 pound. That makes you feel emotional. Why is that? Because when you're placing a trade, you're thinking about the 10,000. You're thinking about the whole amount of money. But the truth is you're just risking 1%. 
you're just risking a hundred pounds out of that account. And what I wish that I did, especially this is true with scale, as you scale up your account, you get better results, you become consistent, you're confident and you say, right, I can trade more money now, you know, I'm comfortable with that. What happens? You go from 10K to let's say 50K and you're not used to risking that amount. So what do you do? You take on the emotional weight of the end figure, which is 50K, rather than saying, well, it's actually only 500 pound per trade that I'm risking. Let's go to 100. You think, oh, I'm trading 100,000 pounds. Well, hold on a minute. You're actually only risking one thousand pounds per trade one percent risk so i'm assuming that you sit, stick to one percent risk so it's just understanding how to minimize the impact because it saved it would have saved me a lot of time i mean i remember i wasted something like seven weeks at one point just because i was taking on the emotional weight of a larger figure and you know i found it difficult i really did and for some people they find it a smooth process they go from trading five thousand ten thousand twenty fifty hundred plus and they have a smooth process but for the majority of people you will incur some type of emotion so Two things so far, having great processes, and if I could, at the beginning, just really understand or have the guidance, if you like, to minimize the impact of the monetary value, that would have changed so much. I would have saved myself so many years, and I think I would have scaled a lot quicker. So, good two tips there. Third part is forecasting. Now, arguably, forecasting, this could this could arguably come in processes, but it's so, import, so important that I wanted it to put it on its own. So, forecasting the possibilities, Forecasting the probabilities, very, very important. The reason why forecasting I hold you know, so greatly is because if I would have learned how to forecast at the beginning, if I had some guidance, you know, my mentors back then when I first started learning with stocks at 18, and they said to me, Mark, you know, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on processes. I don't want you to think about the money side of things. I want you to focus on the actual amount that you're risking. And also, I want you to forecast. Why do I want you to forecast? Well, I want you to start training your subconscious mind to be prepared fully for the probabilities, the possibilities, understand the problem and the possible. You've probably seen a video that I've done before on YouTube about the problem and the possible. And just really understanding the fact that when you can learn to map out those scenarios, so let's say you're trading, you're at, you've got a trading week. You understand that, right, this is probable, this is possible. And then you understand, well, I'm looking at, let's say you're looking at Euro dollar for a long. You're looking at Euro dollar long, and you're thinking, well, when it gets to, I'm you know, assuming that you trade support and resistance right now. We don't, but I'm just assuming. Let's say you've got some support, and that you're looking for a rejection on that support. And you're saying, right, when it gets to that area, then I'm interested. You might think that's good, right? When it gets to that area or that level, I'm interested. You might think that's a good thing to do. But the truth is, that creates a reactionary mindset. Because then what happens? It does get to that area. We start to see some rejections, some volatility, some spikes, and you start thinking, should I place the trade? Should I, shouldn't I place the trade? What should I do? Is it my plan? You start asking all of these questions that essentially cause you to hesitate, feel the emotions, anxiety, and forces you to either not take the trade or get in too late or too early. Why is that? You haven't forecasted. You don't know the possible scenarios. So what we do is that, let's say there's a, a similar sort of area of structure. We focus on patterns. Let's say it's at an edge of the pattern. We know if it gets there, what are the possible scenarios? So will it create a third touch descending channel? Let's say we're looking for a buy. Will it create a retrace? Will it create an override? Will it create a double bottom within the pattern? And if it meets any one of those criterias, does that fit my plan or will I take the trade? And then what that does is it starts to get your mind used to predicting price before it happens. And if you can predict price before it happens and feel comfortable with that, you'll find that your trading will just take a whole new level and you, you won't have that fear of missing out anymore because you've already planned out, let's say you're a dollar or dollar CAD for example, you've already planned out, right, when it gets to that area, I, in my plan, I would trade it this way, this way or this way, these three ways, and these are high criterias. So if the first one doesn't happen, for example, you're not feeling emotional thinking, oh, fear of missing out, I need to get in the trade. You, you take a calm approach and say, right, this hasn't happened, that's one thing crossed off, I'm not taking that, right? What else may happen based off of this pattern that I've back-tested, which is the key, back-tested, and I've seen present itself in this type of structure or this pattern? You'll see, okay, it normally does this, and it normally does that, perfect. Have I got that scenario mapped out in my mind? Have I drawn it out, have I forecasted it? Have I got a before and after? Yes, I have. Well, then guess what? When it actually comes to playing out, you've got much less hesitation. You're feeling confident because you've already seen it in your mind based off of previous data and patterns that repeat themselves over years and years. So this was the most one of the most important changes for me personally. And I wish I was guided at the beginning. I, honestly, I, that was the biggest thing out of all three for someone to tell me forecasting because it helped train my subconscious brain. Now, you've got to understand that your mind's a muscle, right? Your brain's a muscle. It's exactly the same as you're training in the gym. 
forecasting is like a bicep curl for your brain. Guys and girls, these three processes, these are huge. And, you know, and although I could uh, go into numbers of other things that will help you, things like, you know, back testing that I alluded to earlier. So back testing is of course another important thing, but these very, very proactive and you want things that make you proactive and just touching on the back testing part of things. Understand that back testing is essential. It's not something you need to be doing every day, but once you've back tested, you understand the possibilities, the probabilities, you've trained your mind subconsciously. You need things that are gonna make you proactive in the market, which is things like forecasting, having great processes to ask good questions, to encourage you to take good, high quality trades. Minimizing the impact. This is gonna be a big thing that nobody really talks about, but you need to know how to sustain it. You need to know how to scale. You need to know how to deal with that monetary value before it's happened. The last thing you wanna do, start getting great results. Someone chucks 100K at you, you haven't got a clue how to deal with it. You start risking way too much, jumping in too early, you get emotional, and you go backwards, you go the other way. So be prepared beforehand. So I really wanted to make a video on this because this is just short and sweet, gives you guys and girls some value and something that I wish that I knew these three things. I would love to know is there anything that you wish that you knew you wish that you knew when you first started? Is there something that you know right now that's really helped and really clicked for you that you wish you knew? I would absolutely love to know that. And again, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and you've taken as much value away from it as possible. We've got some really, really exciting episodes coming very soon, especially on things like having that probability mindset and how you can tap into it. Guys and girls, have an incredible week ahead and I'll speak to you all soon.